This demonstration shows you how you can use defined barcode configurations for scanning labels feature to enhance your business. This feature allows you to scan barcodes encoded with multiple data elements, such as those specified in the GS1 standard. You can define multiple barcode formats that you scan with a mobile device. You can also define how to parse the data when scanned for a specific field within the mobile page. You can also populate multiple fields by scanning a barcode with multiple data elements within a single field. This functionality is supported for item, lot, and serial number fields when they are on the same page. In this demo scenario, I will scan a barcode that's created according to GS1 specifications in one of the mobile pages. In this barcode, 01 is the application identifier that indicates that the encoded data is a GTIN. A GTIN is a GS1 identification key that is used to identify an item. Here is the item that will be used for this demonstration. Let's look at the GTIN cross-reference setup for the item. This is the GTIN cross-reference created for the item. The application has a seeded configuration to support GS128 barcodes. Let's go to the Configure Barcode Formats task to review the seeded configuration. The task name is Configure Barcode Formats. It is available in Manufacturing and Supply Chain Materials Management Offering and Inventory Management Functional Area. This is the seeded configuration to support GS128 barcodes. Bracket C1 is the symbology identifier corresponding to GS128 barcodes. And it is used to identify the barcode format for parsing the barcode data. In this configuration, O1 is assigned to item GTIN. And 10 is assigned to lot number. Now let's go to sub inventory transfer mobile page and scan the barcode. When the GS1 barcode with GTIN was scanned, it automatically found the corresponding item number and populated that in the item number field. In this demo scenario, I will scan a barcode that has both GTIN and lot number. In this barcode, O1 is the application identifier that indicates that the encoded data is a GTIN. And 10 is the application identifier that indicates that the encoded data is a lot number. Now let's go back to the sub-inventory page to scan the barcode. When the GS1 barcode with GTIN and lot number was scanned in the item field, it automatically found the corresponding item number and populated that in the item number field. It also populated the lot number in the lot number field. In this demo, I will show how to create a new barcode format to support scanning a custom barcode. In this example, dollar character is used to identify the barcode format. P plus is used to indicate that the encoded data is an item number. L plus is used to indicate that the encoded data is a lot number. S plus is used to indicate that the encoded data is a serial number. And vertical bar is used a delimiter to indicate the end of value for each data element. Now. Let's go to the Configure Barcode Format Setup task to create a new barcode format. Selecting the Create Barcode Format button to create a new configuration.
Enter the name and description of the new format. Enter dollar for the barcode identifier prefix. Once set up, any barcode with dollar as a prefix will use this configuration for parsing the barcode data. Select the plus icon to add the identifiers and their configuration. Here I am going to add the configuration to identify the item that's encoded in the barcode. Here, specify whether the length of the barcode data, encoded for the data identifier, is fixed or variable. For fixed lengths, specify the number of characters in the barcode data. O1 identifier in GS1 label is a good example of fixed length value. In this case I am selecting variable length and will use the vertical bar as the delimiter to denote the end of the value. Here, specify the type of value encoded for the data identifier. If you select date, you can also provide the format of the date value in the barcode. Similarly, I created the configuration to identify the lot and serial number encoded in the barcode. Now, selecting the Submit button to create the configuration. Now let's go to the Subinventory page to scan the barcode. When the barcode is scanned, it automatically populated the item number, lot number, and serial number fields. This concludes this demonstration. Thank you for watching.